and we're in China Grove, North Carolina at Longhorn Race Car, Steve Arpin. Steve, I'm gonna be honest, when I realized it was in China Grove, I so bad wanted it to be China Grove from the Doobie Brothers song, but it's not. <laughs> That's in Texas. Yep. But no, we are here in China Grove, North Carolina. We're here at the Longhorn Complex. It's impressive. We're starting here in the house car shop. Uh, we're gonna talk about that. You guys are fabricating back here. But I'm just gonna go ahead and pull the Band-Aid off. How does a guy out of Canada end up in China Grove, North Carolina running a chassis company? <laughs> it's, it's been a, well, any story in motorsports is a roller coaster, right? This has been, this has been the ultimate roller coaster. So I chased a career in racing for, it's all I wanted to do since I was a kid. And ultimately I wanted to go the NASCAR path to be able to afford to have a badass dirt team and just never imagined that this would actually be my path back into dirt racing to have the opportunity to be involved in something like this with such a such an incredible group of people and such a great brand and all these drivers and teams and everything so it's uh it's been a long road but we're here and loving every second of it we're all here we're in the shop there's so many storylines today so tim mccready he operates out of this shop in the yep. longhorn house car the late model you got ethan dotson he's in the longhorn modified yep. so talk to me about what everything that goes on in this building that we've got that we're in right now so we've got two buildings here that are virtually mirrored of each other we just kind of put we we purpose them differently so this side on the front half of this building we've got the house car shop we've got timmy's on the road right now right so all of his stuff's on the road we got our modified program with Ethan's kind of dabbling in late models right now a little bit too. So we got the modified, the two modifieds here. Uh, we got a rally cross car sitting Let's here. Let's talk about the rally cross car real quick. Okay. This has got special meaning to this, you. Yeah. Tell me about this car. So this is Ken Block's car, one of Ken Block's cars. Um, obviously it's uh, a sad day with losing him this year. And this is one of the cars that we did with him. We actually raced out of this shop. And this is one of the Ford Focuses. This is one of, I think three that were ever built of these cars. And this is, if you watch Jim Connor 10, mm -hmm. uh, when they were in, uh, when they're in Europe, I forget exactly where, I think they're in Finland. When you see the car jumping over the other car in the, in the snow, that's this car right here. I think that, that that's the biggest story that I get from you, Steve, is you look at your background. And, and this is, along those lines, Travis Pastrana, this is the car he drove at Volusia and he won in, right? Yep. All the connections that you've got and everybody, do you think that's what's paved the way for you to successfully lead this company? Honestly, it's just relationships are everything. Um, in this sport for sure, but I'm a firm believer just in life in general. And I've been so fortunate all along the way to, to be teamed up with some of the biggest names in motorsports, like globally. Um, on the NASCAR side, got to team up with Dale Jr. and Danica Patrick. And then when we started our own rallycross team, we teamed up with Chip Ganassi on that deal. And then our first driver that we brought into that deal was Brian Deegan. And then once we separated from Ganassi and came on our own, we partnered with Ken Block and we ran his rallycross program. And just the, the, the amount of knowledge that I've been able to, to, to learn from those guys, just the experience that being with them has given me. And it, it's just fast tracked my learning curve to be able to, to, to be able to be a small part of this deal, right? Like we've got so many great people, so many great things, that I'm able to take so much of what I've learned from all those people that have had so much success in so many different disciplines and just apply it to, to this deal as, as we see fit. And it's been pretty amazing. Travis Pastrana to go and win at Volusia in a mod. You got a gator. Would you have ever believed that? We put a rear clip on this car the night before. And he, he almost challenged us. He goes, I think I got it. He goes, I think I wrecked it. And I'm like, you have no idea what these guys have been able to fix. So he had to come back to Charlotte, actually, do a bunch of simulator work for the 500. Uh -huh. And then he came back on Thursday, and he was... He was dumbfounded. The guys put a whole rear clip on this thing under our tent at Volusia and got it back close enough that he was able to go out there and win. So that's, uh, how, how diversified do you have to be, right? The guy goes from, from a dirt car to a truck to a rally car to racing on ice in Canada to all that in a matter of a month. To, to a race of champions, I forget what country that was in, but well, pretty amazing. We just saw, and again, full disclosure, we filmed Road Del Dor a little bit earlier this year as we went last night. We had the Kyle Larson Presents event at Volunteer that Larson won. I'm gonna put you on the spot. Who's more diversified than Travis Pastrana or Kyle Larson? Kyle Larson is one of the greatest of all times. Like, okay. uh, it, it, the greatest of all yeah. times. I, I, you just can't, you can't take anything away. Travis Pastrana is one of the greatest marketing minds and media minds and, and the craziest of all time, yeah. I would say. But as far as ability to, to just jump in something and compete at the absolute highest levels 
right off the bat. Um, there, there's no question what Kyle Larson is capable of. That, that kid is, like, I, I wish we at Longhorn can take credit for what he's doing, but, but he could get in a rocket, he could get in a warrior, he could get in the capital, <laughs> and he's going to go out and do the same thing. I, I, I wish we could say, oh, yeah, it's all Longhorn, but Kevin Rumley, all of our guys do a great job putting really good equipment under him, but that boy is just such a natural talent, it's crazy. He's an animal. Well, let's walk around, show me what we got here. I want to ask you something. You mentioned about Rumley there. Rumley recently said in an interview that you were the missing piece of the puzzle that made Longhorn fly for the Labonis. When you hear words like that, what does that mean for you? It's humbling, right? Like that, Kevin Rumley is probably one of the most sought after figures in dirt late model racing right now. And for him to put that kind of faith in me is, it's a big responsibility, right? Like it's humbling, but it's, it's cool, but it's a, it's a big responsibility and I got to deliver. So um, hearing that is, it's awesome. And it's, it's just, I'm grateful that they built such a strong brand for me to come into and try and take to the next level. So it's a lot of fun. We're coming back through here. So now we got the jig area. We have a, we have a repair jig, we have a new jig. How many, how many cars will you guys run through here in a month? Say on just the repair jig when the, in the heart of racing season when guys are tearing stuff up. Well, in March of this year, virtually nothing. Yes, <laughs> it's right. We, we, we haven't raced since February, since Volusia basically, but um, after, after Eldora last year, um, on that Monday, we had 13 clips scheduled the Monday after Eldora. <laughs> um, so the repair jig, that, that varies uh, just based on demand, uh, but we've got dedicated crew on repairs and everything. This one just finished up. This actually got a front end and a rear clip. We've got two new jigs. Um, awesome. One of, the, one of the benefits of where we're at just outside of Charlotte, we're in, the, we're in the chassis building capital of the country for sure, but arguably probably the world in, in motorsports. And so many people at such a young age come here and try and make a career in racing, make a career in motorsports, everything from fabricators to engineers to everything. So the quality of people we're able to attract in our location here is unbelievable. And I think you can see that in the, the consistency, the repeatability, the quality of what we're putting out now. It, it's all just been a, a big investment in people and then knowing exactly what we have to do to, to make these things better and make these things get to the next level. How many employees here? Too many, <laughs> too many. Um, it, it's, it's honestly, it's really cool. I was looking at it the other day and um, total right now we're at about 37. Wow. Um, not all full time. We're in building number two and it's overwhelming when you come in here. There's a lot going on. Talk to me about building two and what your focus is in here. So over here, um, up here we got our parts department. They both just ran away. Uh, so I don't think they want to be <laughs> on the camera. But uh, downstairs, upstairs, spreads out all the way back there. Got a pre-assembly room in the back. So every time a car comes, we, we pull a pick sheet and everything for that car. It goes into the pre-assembly room in the back. All the bearings are packed. Everything is built uh, in sub-assemblies to exactly what that customer ordered. And it's assembled to go to the racetrack. It's assembled uh, as if we were gonna take our house car to the racetrack, not for, not for you to go home and take it apart and put it together right. Um, uh, parts fab, we got some of the guys that, that build our axle clamps, all of our, all of our clamp on stuff. They really, those kids back there are really what feed, they're the initial feeding of the company, right? Like, the chassis don't get built without what they're doing. The sub assemblies don't get built without all the parts they're producing back there. Um, and then everything in the body shop and everything, modifieds get assembled in the back corner, late models up front, uh, the body shops up here. Um, we do everything in house, all of our, all of our cutting, all of our, our everything. And these guys are getting, uh, they're getting a pretty good system down for putting these things together. How important is being on time and delivering what you say you're gonna do when you say you're gonna do it to your customers? I, I think just in everything I've ever tried to do, it's you're, you're only as good as your word, right? So I think that's everything. Um, and these cars, just the sport in general has, like we've talked about, it's got so expensive. People have so much invested in these sports and in, in these cars and in the people they're employing to work on the cars and build the cars and like if you're going to florida and you're expecting a new car you've got a lot invested on right. preparing for florida and if we don't give you a car when we said we were going to it completely kills your plans and we've cost you probably as much money as a race car could cost right so i think that's incredibly important and we, we've got we've got a realistic schedule in place and i don't think we've been late on a car I don't think we've been late on a car since October of last year. We've been early on all of them. Uh, we fulfilled all of our Florida orders 100%. Um, 
and a lot of these cars out of here they're all they're all going out about a, a week to a week to eight days uh, ahead of schedule right now so and these were booked six months ago if you can snap your fingers right now and you can fix the biggest thing that you want to improve here at Longhorn Race Car, your biggest goal, what is that right now? Probably need to get these guys a better leader. They probably deserve a little <laughs> bit more. But uh, honestly, I think the biggest thing I would do right now is um, just work on efficiencies. And one of the things we've invested a lot in, um, we're, we're so fortunate, like a, I, I feel like a broken record, but I keep on going back to people, right? The we're so fortunate to have so many good people in this thing and we've found new areas to invest in from a development standpoint to really try and solve some of the problems that our drivers are facing. Uh, we watched our late model racing and the aero has become such a big aspect of it, right? Um, and I don't think that's to, to do with anything other than we've maximized, we've maximized what these cars can produce for mechanical grip so much the only thing left is aero. So, we're, we're really focusing right now on what's next. Um, got a lot of things that we've been working on, a lot of things that we can, we're trying to understand to, to answer our customers' um, complaints when they're, when, when they're in dirty air and they can't get close to the guy or when they stall out when they get three or four car lengths away and stuff like that. So I think if I could snap my fingers right now, it would be to, to give our guys more, gr more grip to be able to go pull out a line and go past the guy ahead of them. You also said something else. You were like, we're kicking butt right now. But Mark Richards, didn't, he's, not, he's not sleeping. He's gonna keep digging. And, and you made a comment, you said, we have to outdo ourselves before he outdoes us. How he will pass us. He will. He, he, is, he has reinvented this sport time and time again. I always say when you, when you count Mark Richards out and you piss him off, you've messed up. Absolutely. Because he's going to go do something. He's going he's gonna to come up with something that's going to change everything. Absolutely. Mark is, what, what Mark has done for the sport is revolutionary. Like it's, it's if, if when all is said and done, if I can be like within a, a, a long reach of being able to accomplish a small piece of what he's accomplished, that'll be a success for me. He's, what, what he's done for the sport is, is unbelievable. The, the business he's built, the service he's provided, uh, everything they've done has been remarkable. And we're, we're very fortunate to be where we're at right now. Um, but I, to think that he's just gonna kinda go home and put his feet up on the couch and crack a beer and enjoy a third place finish or anything like that is, is, is naive. So I, uh, it, it's really important to me. We're, we're gonna get past. We will get past what we're running right now. We'll be obsolete at some point. And I, I want to obsolete ourselves rather than, rather than being obsolete by someone else. That's good stuff, man. <laughs> All right. Obviously, road to Eldora. Let's talk about Eldora. I think the last five World 100s you guys have won, do you take more pride or more pressure in knowing that you got a winning streak going in the granddaddy of all dirt late model races? So, quick little funny story about Eldora. My first time at Eldora. Place is amazing, right? I was yes. in a modified years ago and qualifying. Um, I'm going to say I, I, I broke a fuel line. It never came loose, right? It broke. <laughs> yeah. um, but I caught fire in qualifying, pulled into the infield, and Mark Richards was there. And Mark Richards actually put my car out. I no, pulled seriously? Yeah. Wow. So that was years ago, and that's the first time I ever met Mark Richards. So wow. small world there. But Eldora, it's, it's, it's historic. It's, it's unbelievable. And, and to hear those stats, uh, again, it's, it's it, the, the first three seconds after hearing that it's just like kind of like you, you tingle a little bit like that's amazing uh, and then you just shift immediately to we got to maintain that we got to keep on going right we got to make it sick and it, that 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 racetrack is just so there's nothing like it and to be to be able to go back there the 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 fans the like it's 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 a true event like it's a it's a spectacle it's not just a race weekend is the temperature in this shop a few weeks in advance of Eldora any different than the rest of the year? Leading up to that million last year definitely was, definitely was. But yeah, that's a, uh, I would say you, you would have to categorize that as our, as our Daytonas or our Super Bowls and stuff like that, right? Like when you go to Eldora, um, I don't care if it's a weekly race. If you can win a race at Eldora, it's it's something special. You know what I mean? So when we're leading up to those races, everything we do, we got. When you have a car that works really good at Eldora, you you protect that car, you you baby that car, right? And, and so on and so forth. So when leading up to leading up to that race, there's 
you, you definitely spend a little bit more time crossing every T and dotting every I and making sure everything's perfect for sure.